Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi, Bree. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I am so excited. I know we've been talking in the green room just how excited we are for this. Um, but can we just show off your fantastic dress right now? Because I don't know if people can yes, see. Yeah. It is incredible. My, Look at this paper t shirt. Dress. <laughs> <laughs> you are like every just the per perfect teacher i wish i had you you're amazing and look thank at this background you. um for those who are joining oh, us this is free's home like look at what she's curated this is just absolutely fantastic absolutely yes fantastic. this is my two-year-old daughter's pre-k class and yes and i felt real good about my t-shirt dress because you know, I am three months from having a baby, so <laughs> I feel really good. <laughs> She's a superwoman. <laughs> that is, I had no idea. That is incredible. <laughs> yes. And thank you for having a three-month-old and being here with us right now. That's yes, very absolutely. big. Thank you. Appreciate so much. Okay, Laura saying hi. Hi, Diana. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> Actually, while we're at it, I would love to see where people are dropping in from. Where are you, where are you, um, you know, tuning in from? I'd love to see where people are joining us. Yes. Um, yes. And so, Free, how are you doing? How's your week been? I'm wonderful. I am in Virginia for people on the East Coast. Woohoo! And, um, <laughs> This is actually a busy week. We're actually preparing for the girls to go back to school because here school starts September 8th. I'm when, when is school starting around the country? If you have children who are virtual yeah. learners, I would also like to hear when are they have, are they already back or are they going to start after Labor Day like they are here? Yeah. So we are starting. So we have been getting their space together, focusing on some of the things we're going to talk about in the video, like what extracurricular activities yeah. they're going to be doing virtually and things like that. So it's been busy over here. Wow. Oh my God. That's crazy that they're going to be going back to school. I know, but I've been, some people yes. who I've been talking to this week, their kids just started two days ago online. And like, yes. I know there were some Zoom issues, but now it's like everything is sorted, but um, seeing some of the schedules, it's just crazy. It's like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Zoom meetings. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm already getting the, you know, it's the so Zoom. Zoom actually, real. Yeah. yeah, Zoom actually crashed in D.C. Um, on the first day of school. Oh. And so it was just outages <laughs> everywhere. Oh, boy. And so a lot of the kids are going, this is the best first day ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kids were like, amazing. <laughs> More summertime. Um, well, it's easy. I, school is a breeze. <laughs> yeah, it was. Easy peasy. Oh my God. Well, welcome. Oh, I saw everyone. Minneapolis. Hi, Minneapolis. I was looking at this. some of these. Indianapolis, Minneapolis, Seattle. Oh, Indiana. Welcome, everyone. Hi. This is so exciting. Well, if you are joining us here today, this event is an opportunity for parents, guardians, nannies to receive inspirational, engaging, and tangible tips to ensure success for their early childhood and elementary school learners. So whether your child or children will be homeschooled and virtual learner or doing 50-50 split, Free Write is going to go into an in-depth on five essential tips that will catalyze an exciting year of learning during this unique time. So Free Write, this incredible woman who is here with us today, is a dynamic academic leader with educational experience spanning over 10 years. At the heart of her educational philosophy is the belief that all children deserve the right to world-class education in a safe, encouraging, and motivating environment. So thank you, Free, for being here. Thank you, everyone who is joining us. You know the spiel. We want to hear from you guys. So please chime in in the chat box like you're doing so already so perfectly. Um, you can send to all panelists and attendees so everyone can see. And also put any of your questions in the Q&A box, and we will get to them at the end. And also some mm -hmm. exciting news, which I'll let Free go more into, but she just launched her website. Um, this yes. is such perfect timing. So any of the resources you see today in this event, you'll be able to access it on her website. And I'm going to drop that in the chat box. So please be sure to copy and paste. Um, and with and that- And it will be free. Yes, and it'll My be free. My name is free, I like to give free stuff, so. <laughs> you are amazing, you are a saint. Um, on that note, I'm gonna pass it off to you, Free, to kick off today's conversation. 
Well, again, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Riveter, for having me to do this. I love to teach. I love to educate children, and I love to train others to educate children as well. So as a parent, it's really important to be able to inspire and motivate your children in learning. And so this opportunity really is just allowing me to share my gift. So I am happy to be in your service today, and hopefully you take away some great things um you the the powerpoint will be available um on, on the website freewrite.com but you will also get a more in-depth conversation with me and you'll learn more about me hopefully and my children as we go through this presentation okay so let's get ready to rock i am going to share my screen here we go sorry trying to find the right one. Here we go. All right. And you guys should be able to see that. So the name of this presentation is You Are Enough. And this is part one of a three-part series. And this one is Five Tips to Catalyze an Amazing School Year. After that, I will also give you um, the next one I'll tell you is a resource hall. And I will be going over all types of resources to um, work with your children at home to engage them in reading, math, extracurricular activities, and all types of things. So that's next week. I mean, that's in two weeks. But today, we're going to talk about you are enough, because I think that's where we want to start. And that's the basis of knowing that you are going to be so great for your children, or you're the best nanny or the best teacher providing resources for your children. And so that's where we want to start. Okay, so here we go. Um, give me a second. My amazing engineering husband is over here helping me. Thank I love you. it. I was going to say, okay. I think it's in um, in presenter mode, so we can switch it. Okay, in. I'm sorry. He told me I'm not sharing the, the thing that I want to share, so I'm going to oh, come back out and share again. Perfect. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, good. I don't know how to exit out. He's going to help me. That's, thank goodness. Um, I have my best friend slash husband here who's really incredible with this. That's so good. Ugh. I know we were just talking about in the green room, like, you know, creating your village, like creating a space, you know, your community. Yes. You have your friend right now taking care of your three month old. It's just, it's fantastic. There we go. Okay. So he's going to fix this for me and then we yeah. will get moving. Oh, good. We will start rocking and rolling. Let's All see, right. people are starting school. Oh, Amy said September 2nd is the start of remote learning for us. Yeah. Wow. I know I have to say to all the mothers out there, you guys are doing an incredible job. This is a whole new terrain, especially like being there, supportive of your kids, utilizing, you know, having to now do education via Zoom. It's very, um, it's a whole new world. So incredible kudos to you guys. <laughs> You're going to learn some incredible things you can do to be active and engage your kids creatively. This will be really fantastic. Perfect. Okay. Did it happen? It was definitely. This just echoes why it will also be so important to do in-person activities. <laughs> My children are four and I, and one, so we're on preschool training. Oh, wow, this is perfect. So, Chrissy, this oh, is going to be so great perfect. for you. Yes. Oh, my God, amazing. Okay, can you ask? Let's see, I'm curious, what other parents out there, what is the, what's the age of your kids? five and ten k in fourth grade my kiddos are three and four right there with you chrissy wow oh hey zoe that's incredible this is going to be perfect for you guys how to do hands-on learning engage them you know and it's also fun for the parent i think that's something that like you'll really see in this presentation is like how you can also engage and get to know your kids and do fun activities um i think we're all feeling that kind of computer fatigue so this is going to be great <gasps> we're here oh, beautiful we're here yes <laughs> thank you for the space fillers, madeline <laughs> oh of course i'm right. here for so, you 
here we go. So you are enough. Let's move forward in the presentation. I don't want to waste any more time. So today I want to talk about our overview really quickly of what we're going to go through. I'm going to talk about igniting the flame to pump you up and get you excited about what you can do as a parent and as a part of your child's village. And also I'm going to give five tips. The tips are good vibes only, stay on task, securing the village, know where you stand, party time, because school, you got to party in school, okay? And then we'll have a question and answering session, all right? So that's where we are. And here, let's talk about igniting the flame. I get in a ton of questions to me about this whole virtual learning thing or about the possibilities of eat or of homeschooling during COVID. And most of the time parents are saying, I work a full-time job. I am busy. I am struggling with finding resources to help my child. It was a struggle in the spring. How is it going to be better now if I'm working and I have multiple children who are all at different grade levels, you know, all of these different things. And what I wanted to do is one, motivate you to know that you are enough. You already are amazing. You are, these children were already placed in your care. They weren't with anybody else. They were given to you. So they are a gift to you. So that alone lets you know that you are equipped with everything you need to do this job and to make life for them incredible and to make learning for them an adventure and something that will catalyze them to fulfilling their purpose. You also have resources available to you. Please include me. I am your neighborhood friendly teacher free. Okay. I am now a resource to you. And so continue to expand on those resources to know that you are great. And the last one is we're all in the same boat. This hit teachers by storms, educators by storm, storm school systems by storm. It, it's it's um, a whirlwind of surprise in 2020 for everybody. So please do not feel like you are alone, that your problem is too great to be solved. And take the time to constantly reflect on what you need and how you need to get the assistance during this process, okay? So those are the things I wanted you to know. If you can keep those three things in mind, you are already amazing, You're, there are resources available to you, and we are all in the same boat, then you know that you are enough to conquer COVID school this year, okay? All right, here we go. The next slide. We're going to start with the first tip, which is good vibes only. And I'm first focusing on those of you with pre-K learners. So those two to four-year-olds, this is what I'm talking about first. And I'm the first tip is creating an engaging and motivating learning environment, okay? So when you create an engaging and motivating learning environment, in fact, behind me, if you're looking behind me or if you're looking on the PowerPoint, I'm actually showing you my two-year-old who's going to be advancing in the pre-K-3 curriculum, her class classroom environment. So the things that you want to think about, because they're at home, and home for children usually makes them think of other things, play, fun, family, but it's not always thinking about the school type environment. So you want to create a space for them that will allow them to zone in and hone in and focus. And so you want it to be motivating, engaging. It should in inspire wonder to make them think and it should make them focus on a routine and a structure, okay? So I'm going to go through some of the things that I did in Jasmine's space, and then I will talk about how you might tweak that for your own um, home environment. So the first tip is a small seating area for your two to five-year-old, okay? So there's Jasmine, she's two, she loves her space. I chose this space for her because one, in this process, I am going to choose things that can outlast this adventure of being at home for school. So even after this is over, I still want to be able to use the things that I've purchased or that I have. So her table is smaller, has four chairs for friends when they come by, her cousins, you know, once we're all not <laughs> separate in life. And so that's something important that you want to have. And you want it to be where they're not sliding out the chair or falling. Sometimes we want to give them a table that's kind of too big for them. And so the, the whole time they're trying to be comfortable sitting on their knees or trying to make sure that they can reach things. And so you want to make sure that it is a place that is comfortable that, for them to sit. You also don't want them to lay down because that kind of changes how children focus. So when you are doing the whole group time or the 
learning time. You want to make sure that they can sit upright and that they're going to be comfortable. Okay. All right. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about is their library space. Every child should have a space for library. Okay, here is Jasmine in her library. This is a small bookshelf. It's a very simple thing. And I change the books out pretty frequently based on whatever we're learning. Libraries are able to, uh, you are able in many cities to go to your library and pick up books if you request them online and just do a drop off and pick up if that's something you're interested in. You know, lights all them off, spray them off. But that's something you can do. I'm a teacher, so I have plenty of books. So this is kind of how I do that. But you want Want your child to have an experience with reading and to understand the power of reading and how important it is. So you do want to have books on site, whether you put them in a bookshelf or in a bin or just lay them on a table, you want to have that available to them. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is having a place for them to for you to write or your nanny to write or the teacher to write, whoever is, is engaging with the child and for them to communicate. So I chose an easel that happens to be a dry erase board and a chalkboard all in one. You can flip it over and it's universal. And I like it because she can paint from it. She can also write on it. I can communicate with her. We can practice things together. This is such a really good thing. Now you don't have to choose the large easel one. You can get a small dry erase boards and in fact, Dollar Tree sells plenty of them. So you can get something smaller, but you want them to have the ability to practice writing and it be a way where they can engage with you in that process, okay? The next step is learning posters. Now, we are very colorful and uh, the theme in Jasmine's room is The Very Hungry Caterpillar. It's one of our favorite books together and so a lot of the posters that I chose to talk about colors, the days of the week, that are the months of the year, that are all a part of her routine are hanging up. Now, I want to say this for parents who may have a child that was diagnosed or shows signs of ADHD or struggles with focus, you do not have to put all of the posters up at the same time. You actually can just put them up one at a time. In fact, if you have the easel, the poster can clip to the easel. And as you're changing what you're doing, you can take one down and go to the next. Jasmine is used to this from her school environment from when she was in school. So this was not a problem for me to transition this at home for her. And the other thing is you wanna make sure that the things are at eye level. So as you can see, Jasmine is able to take her pointer and reach and, and engage with these posters. They are not up there just for decoration. They really are things that you want to be tangible, useful tools. So when you put them up and you're practicing the alphabet, teaching her to point to each one, going down through the days of the week. And they might not get it all the time right and point for one-to-one -one correspondence, but the goal is to get them to practice and to be, learn to understand it over time. So that's one that's really big that those learning posters, you can get them on Amazon, school stores, and so forth, and you will be able to engage with them. But again, don't feel like you have to hang them all up at one time. Feel free to just do one at a time, okay? The next step, I mean, the next tip of the learning space is learning resources. This is a really big one. And again, next week, I am, I'm sorry, in two weeks, I am going to do a resource call and tell you about amazing things that I've used for my children or as an educator that will really be a, a benefit to a child uh, based on all the different subjects. But one of the things that's really important is to have a space in their learning area that are the things that they play with for school purposes only. It is not the same as the toys that they have in their toy chest, in their bedroom, in their play area because you want to acknowledge that these are things that are focused on us learning. We're having fun. So a lot of the things that I use for her are they're like games and she thinks she's playing all the time, but they are not in their play place down in the basement. They are up here with me and we engage with them as in this is stuff for school. So that is separating and giving the concept of this is school time. And then when we're not in school, this is play time. Okay. Okay, so those are things that you want to really consider. What are the resources that you are pulling in that are specific for that learning time and how are you going to store them? Okay, all right. The next one is, this one is 
one of my favorite things is proud moment posting. Now I took this idea from Pinterest where they took picture frames, added some yarn to them, took a couple of clips, clothespins, small clothespins, and now you have a gallery wall. That gallery wall allows your child to feel pride. All of the artwork that you're seeing in this image was done by my two daughters. One is eight and the other one is two. So the two of them made all these pieces and so as Jasmine, however, continues, I will change those pieces to be things that are beneficial to her. So those are things that just make them feel good about the space and they, they, she will get to choose the pieces that she wants to replace other pieces on this wall. So it becomes something that is ownership for them. They, they are able to take ownership of the things happening in their learning space. That is also a thing that, inspi inspar that sparks wonder and amazement and allows them to feel engaged and motivated because it's them doing the work and not the parent or the nanny or whoever is teaching, okay? The next one, it is so important to have a well-lit place, okay? So our space is right off of our patio. One part of that is because I want her to be able to go outside and you know have recess in our backyard, but also the lighting for this space is really great. So one of the first things I consider when we were thinking about where her learning space would be is where would she get outside lighting? And, and it would be a place that's bright and exciting for her, okay? Now, if your child doesn't need this much light, but you know maybe you wanna be able to crack the blinds or open the windows just a little bit, then you, know, you can choose a space like that too but you want them to feel like they're still connected with the world okay so that's the reason for doing considering your lighting okay also it'll stop them from being as sleepy in the space too all right calendar and activity schedule the thing about school is that they are kind of driven by the pace of the teacher and the schedule that the, the classroom is going with. You wanna create some of that same things, th that same feeling at home. And one way of doing that for a younger child that's in pre-K two, I mean, that's uh, two to four years old, is simply having a, a, a my first calendar situation where they can talk about the date in their routine, but also they can talk about right now it's reading time, right now it's music time. And so the calendar that I chose allows them to do all of that in that one piece. So I don't need them to know her to know the time that everything is happening. I just need her to be able to understand that this is the time when we do this particular task so that she is understanding that this is a part of her learning routine okay everything is about creating that routine for her all right also going back really quickly the other reason why you want to have outside viewing for the children's space is also wonderment is created through nature hearing we have seen hummingbirds we have a family of robins we have all type turtles and all type of things that come past our deck lizards so all of those things create an excitement for her so she might stop the lesson of whatever we're doing and say look at the lizard look at the turtle and that's okay because it's exciting and then a a, a spur of the moment conversation and learning moment can happen just from that ex that conversation about the turtle or the lizard okay so that's important now here are the bonuses my husband says I'm the queen of going over the top so I have stuff hanging from the ceiling I have a theme of the very hungry caterpillar we have a learning rug all of those are things that I added for fun and color because uh, some of them I have anyway because I'm a teacher and it just it's my family's vibe you don't have to do these things but they really do put a nice little effect to the room so feel free to add your own touch of how the class the, the the classroom is popping and shows swag and pizzazz and is exciting to them if they like superheroes bring spider-man into the classroom those are all great things that you can do okay so those are the things that I use to create her pre-K space. Now I wanna move on really quickly to the K to five parents. If you have a child in grades K through five, this is my daughter. She is going into third grade. This is her space that I created for her. She is very much a sassy diva princess. So her space theme is confetti and it speaks to her. Now the same things that apply to the pre-K, the two to four-year-olds is the same things that applies to the space for them as well. It should be motivating. It should be engaging. It should create a sense of wonder, and it should have focus, routine, and structure. Now, 
it does not have as many elements in the same way, especially if your child is virtual learning with their school system. So you don't need as much stuff, but the things that you provide should have a same sense of purpose, okay? So let's talk about them. One, the same thing is, is a seating table. Now, one I wanted to talk about with her, this is Juliana. And so Juliana's space, I chose not to buy a desk, a classic desk like the one she does have. I chose to use kind of like a rectangular table that you may use for parties. Because the thing is, you want things that when this is over again, you can have your house back. It's not an extra piece of furniture that you don't need anymore. It's something that you can re repurpose. And so this table, I just covered it with a tablecloth. I would recommend vinyl that wipes off easy or one that's maybe cloth that you can just keep washing instead of plastic that'll tear and won't last long. And so this is something simple that I did for her to make it feel beautiful and exciting for her because we usually when they go to school the teachers decorate the classrooms and so I wanted that space to do the same thing for her so this is what her seating area looks like also it's really important to check height you want children to be comfortable especially looking at some of the schedules that they have if they're going to be sitting a long time you may even consider what ergonomical chair you might provide for them but if not pillows and different things for them to feel comfortable in this space okay all right the next one, she also has a library. So her library is small, but she's in chapter books. So she has chapter books. You can do this with a bin. She, I'm so proud. She likes Babysitter's Club like I did growing up and it's now big and a thing again. So she, I bought her the, the first set of Babysitter's Club books and they came in this cute tin. So she's so excited to take her reading time to engage with those books. And so you do want to have a sense of reading especially they should try to do about 20 minutes a day okay your child should try to read 20 minutes a day whether if it's, if it's a young child they're maybe just going through the pictures or reading with you or your older children who are able to actually read you're making sure that you're having books on their level and i'll talk a little bit more about being on or having books on their level a little later and so those are the things you want to do okay all right the next one time management now time management for my third grader looks different than my pre-K student. So for her, I don't need her to have a rundown schedule of everything, but what I did want for her is to be able to write, I need to uh, complete this assignment, this assignment, and then check it off. I also put a clock in her area because one of the things I noticed in the spring for her in particular was if she was left to her own devices and we just set her on the computer in the program that they created, she would kind of have a tendency to drift off. And so 20 minutes later, she's still on problem two. And so when I then began to set timers for her and tell her, okay, you have 30 minutes to complete this task or 20 minutes to complete this task, it helped keep her on schedule. And so if you have a Google Home device you can also say hey google set a timer my google is probably going to start talking to me now because i said that but um you want to make sure that you're doing things to engage them with time and allowing them to keep track of the fact that they need to stay focused okay all right the next one, doodles. This area was really fun for me to create. I wanna talk about the paper that I used to frame her area. It is actually a paper, you can get it on Amazon or any place else called Better Than Paper. And it is actually dry erase paper that we would use for bulletin boards in school. And so I've placed it all around. So if she needs to have scratch paper for an assignment, or if she needs to be able to just track her thoughts or outline for a writing assignment or paper, she can write directly on there. And so it's fun for her because she feels this freedom of writing on our walls <laughs> and all of this. And so then she can erase it and do something else the next day. And it erases wonderfully. It also wipes off um, with soft cloth if you needed to. And so this is a paper that I use to allow her to doodle. I also, in the far right corner here, um, her mouse pad is actually designed as paper that she can write on that sheet, tear it off and go to the next one. So those are creative ways that I chose to allow her to doodle. You can also use their notebooks, their journals, composition notebooks. Of course, she has some of those in her caddy on her desk. But all of those are ways for her to write and she's never looking for pencils. She's never needing to you know, run out of markers. She's always has those things right at, at, in a tangible space close to her, okay? All right, storage. 
Now, the school system is usually going to provide them with more than just their laptop and other things, but also in your own classroom, you're providing them uh, in your own home, you're going to give them books and things to read and to, to use. You want to make sure they have a place to put them away. Their space should stay clean because a chaotic mind is unfocused. And so you want to make sure that everything they need. Now, for your kindergartners, you might not put the scissors and the, you know, the pointy sharp things in their in their view. However, for Juliana, she has her pencil sharpener, her scissors, and all of those things because she's old enough to, to be responsible for them. But make sure that you have a storage place that is available for their resources so that is not cluttering your house and your space or their learning environment, okay? And also, she needs to have a, they need to have a space for showing their work. This is a picture that Juliana completed and she decided she wanted to hang in her learning environment. And so the, her flamingos are part of that and she can change this and add more on this space for her. And it's stuff that she is proud of and it makes this space her own, okay? Uh, let's see. Also, she is directly across from Jasmine's learning space. I made sure to separate them so that there's not a lot of chaos in the noise. Juliana usually will have on headphones before her class. However, if she doesn't have the headphones on, we don't want to be a distraction. So there's enough space between them where they're not distracting one another, but they also have the same views and the same lighting and things like that. Okay. And the bonuses, again, that I added for her class were the theme decorations. The other one I wanna focus on really quickly is voices from your village. It is so important to make sure children still know that there are so many people in their corner, whether it's their grandparents, whether it's their teacher or you, you all, their siblings, whoever is normally a part of their village. One of the things that I did for Juliana is I had people who are a part of her village write little messages to encourage her. Those messages will also allow her to reflect on a rough day. She can go and, and pump herself up and know that she can do it. So they all sent those messages. And so anytime she's looking in her learning space, she knows she has a whole group of people who are supporting her. So that's something you can come up with. You know, if your child is younger, you might not have them write it out, but you might have like a little jar and you have them, you drop those messages in there and then you read one to them each time just to let them know that they are so well thought about and so well loved okay and I also gave her rugs and pillows and things for her to be comfortable but those are just bonuses they're not necessary but they are great to have okay all right so we have gone through tip one in both the pre-k and in the k to five arena of having good vibes, making sure that their learning space makes them feel like this is an exciting place to learn. The next tip is staying on task, okay? To stay on task, what I mean is follow, have a plan of consistency, follow a daily schedule. I'm gonna start this time with kindergarten to fifth grade, okay? In school, they normally have something like this that's in their school that's on the left that shows the 8, 15, 9 o'clock, 9, 45. You don't have to do that in your home. But what you want to do is, one, if you're, they're in a school system and they're not a homeschool child, follow the school district's routine. If they aren't a, a, a child who is a part of the school district, but they are homeschooled, have consistency, meaning if every day they wake up, they start with a warm up and yoga and they, you know, that's consistent every day. Whether class started at eight or 10 because they had a doctor's appointment at eight on Tuesday, you still want to start with that same flow and keep that schedule because then it makes them accountable to the time and committed to the agreements of the time of the learning space, okay? You want to have them reading 20 minutes a day. Also, ensure that they're getting physical education. You don't want them to catch the COVID-15 pounds. So there are so many resources we'll talk about in a couple of weeks that can allow them to have physical education at home if it's not offered through their school system. Allow them to have recess or outdoor time. Go for walks. You know, let them play in the backyard if it's enclosed and so forth. The arts, make sure they have music and drawing and things that are engaging to them. Find out from your school systems if they're doing it, and if not, look at ways that you can supplement, and I'll be happy to provide those resources. Let them take brain breaks. 
they are not used to sitting in their own homes unless they've been homeschooled prior to this and having to keep this robotic schedule of pace, 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 this assignment, this assignment, this task, this task. Give them breaks, let them stretch, let them go sing a goofy song, let them go play a game really quickly and, and set a timer for it and then let them come back. A break shouldn't be any longer than five to 10 minutes, okay? Uh, observe and communicate issues. Difficulty with keeping up to, with the work fatigue, a lack of focus, if they're uncomfortable. Those are the things, your teacher is a part of your village. If you see any of those things, reach out to the teacher from the school system and say, hey, I'm noticing this from my child. What are some things that I can do to, to correct that? If you notice that it's too much work, say, hey, this is difficult for me. For instance, me, I am a new mom of a three month old and I have a two year old and I also have a um, eight, a third grader. So when it comes to all of them, I need to say, you know what, it was difficult for her to keep up with that schedule because I had these things going on. Also, when communicating with your village and issues, my husband is also working from home at this time. So if he has a business meeting, I want to make sure that she's uh, not loudly doing PE or yoga or, or, or um, singing in a time where he's having a meeting. So that communication is so critical and that, that ability to be flexible and adjust as you need to and not feel like you have to stick to something because that's the way you started. In these first few weeks of getting started in school, first six weeks is what we call it as teachers, you want to make sure that you are tweaking the things that are not working the way that you want and communicating or seeing if it's something that may just need a little more time to bake, okay? Pre-K, so determine your daily schedule. Usually your pre-K children are not online learners. You're probably supplementing and creating this curriculum and materials and resources on your own. That's me, I'm that parent. And so I'm actually sharing with you how Jasmine's schedule is kind of set up. So her segments are no more than 10 to 15 minutes. So in the morning, because we are a Christian household, we start with worship and a scripture. But whether you're a Christian or not, you can do something for character building. That is so important. That is something that they usually get from a school environment that you want to continue with them. So having something that connects with character is very important. Moves and grooves is the next part of her day. We'll do yoga, kitty workouts, sing along to kids' songs, nursery rhymes, and so forth. She likes stuff like what? does the fox say goofy things like that but those are just things to get her alive and awake in the morning daily practice going over the days of the week months of the year the calendar and shapes and colors those are things that i want to practice with her on a routine so she knows what's the color of the day what month is this we're singing songs connected to that daily lessons. So there's going to be a lesson, whether it's STEM-based inquiry through Tinker Garden. I'm a teacher for Tinker Garden to allow her to engage with her peers online. So sometimes that lesson may take up that time that would be reading math or craft or exploration using uh, center-based exploration. All of those things, though, are going to be a part of her daily flow. And also play-based learning. So her toys are actually a part of her day. So going to play in her kitchen area or working, building her building blocks and things like that is actually a part of the day that is built in. And of course you have nap and lunch and so forth, but you wanna make sure that you have a daily routine and it's no more than 10, 10 to 15 minutes for those pre-K two to four year olds, okay? Have consistency, make sure they're doing physical education, resort, uh, recess, arts, and so forth. Give them brain breaks as well, be flexible. Understand that sometimes it can be too much or overload for them and be okay with saying, okay, we've done enough for the day and we'll start back tomorrow doing our routine and being able to be flexible, okay? So that is the tip two of following a daily schedule and staying on task for both the pre-K and the K to five learners, okay? Now we are on to securing the village. This one is so big. I love this poster. I saw it online. It says it takes an entire village to raise a child. That's a common com uh, statement that we've all said. It's an African proverb. And it says that includes your extended family. It includes support staff, community, teachers, administrators, students, parents, and guardians. All of those people are a part of their village. It is so important to recognize who are the vested members of your child's community. Who are the people who really want to 
be a part of that village? And how are you going to communicate with them? Like I said, my husband, him telling me his daily schedule so that I can know how to accommodate the work he's doing and his business calls as an engineer and also making sure that the children are engaged. Also communicating when, if I have a doctor's appointment for one child, what can the other children do? That's a big one. So in fact, one of the things I did is I bought, a, my husband said, you have sub plans for homeschool? I said, yes, I do. Because if one child has to go to the doctor, I need the learning to continue and the structure to continue with who's ever at home with the other children because I usually don't take them all at the same time. And if I do, then, you know, that's cool. But if I can't, I want to make sure that the, the process is simple and that whoever is at home is able to continue that process, okay? Another one is chat with the members about expectations and needs, especially their teachers. If you're finding that the schedule is too difficult or something is an issue, you really want to make sure that you communicate that so that they can help you or the school can adjust because maybe you're not the only person having that comp that issue and that's a really good thing for the school to know uh ensure children understand their support system they need to know who they can contact for tutoring support they need to know if if mommy is working with Jasmine, is it okay for Jules to come over and ask me a question? If she has tech support issues, does she need to go to her dad because he's better with that than me? Whatever the case is, they need to know who's in their, their camp, who's in their village and how can they support them. Their teachers usually have office hours. Make sure that your child is engaging in those office hours with their teachers. One, it'll build a bond so that when they do eventually go back to school, they have a bond with that teacher, but also it allows them to ask the questions that they don't understand. Help them feel free to ask questions, okay? Constantly evaluate your need for support and seek it. Do not struggle when you don't have to, okay? Make sure that you are seeking out support as you need it, okay? That is securing the village. The next one, tip four, is know where you stand, okay? Know where you stand. So with this one, I'm specifically speaking to what are your child's academic strengths and weaknesses? Some of you may know that already. Others of you may not. I would recommend either asking the school if they're going to do some diagnostic assessments at the beginning of the year, or you can do them on your own. A great place to get some of those is teacherspayteachers.com. It's a great, it's teacher design resources. And if you type in diagnostic assessment, you can find out, you can get a pre-K one and find out what colors does your child actually know, what letters do they recognize and so forth. And then it allows you to decide where you need to move forward. Or if you have an older child, there are also diagnostic assessments that you as a parent or your nanny or your guardian can give. This is something that teachers, I recommend you offer to other uh, to your parents to do if the school is not going to automatically provide that. This will also help with determining where they need support with reading and literacy and math. Do they recognize the numbers Are they be, or are they beyond that? So you want to make sure you have an idea of where their your child is because one of the biggest things I hear is, oh, you know, I feel like the class is moving too fast or the class is too slow. My child knows more than this. Well, that brings on the next point, supplementing areas of concern. So if you know that the class is not helping the child in this area or it's too easy, this is where you want to supplement. So you can say, you know, my child needs more support with writing. I know this is an area where I'm going to buy a few more resources and I'm going to invest in maybe getting a tutor for this portion or asking the teacher to tutor in this portion because this is an area where my child is struggling or below grade level. If your child is advanced and you're saying, you know, this, this kind of wastes their, they're bored because this is so easy. Well, explain to your child the importance of staying focused and engaged with their classroom, but then say, but I have a challenge for you. If you you're so great at the things that are happening here. Here are some things that I can offer you. And also, again, if your child is in school, ask the school system for support for that because they may have things already developed or available that you can just pick up instead of purchasing, okay? And again, resources. I can't wait for in a couple of weeks when I come back on part two, I want to share with you resources that I have personally used for, with my own children and also as an educator that will create student success. All of those puzzle pieces come together. You, you, and it's so important for the parent to understand where their child is so that you can help and, and motivate them and keep them focused on what's happening in this weird season of virtual learning, okay? 
Next, the last tip I wanna talk about is party time, okay? This is a big one. It is so important. I think sometimes people don't always focus on this one, but a child's socio-emotional status matters. And many parts of that socio-emotional character development, all of that is built in their engagement with their peers. You really wanna consider how will your child engage with their peers in a fun environment. So that could be online extracurricular activities. My daughter, the oldest one is an actress. So she is in theater lab and lots of different things like that to help her stay on her craft. And she gets to act out play. She actually was just cast as Hamlet. So she got to pretend to be Hamlet and work with children her age. And so that was something that was inspiring to her. Also, Tinker Garden. I am actually a, a, a leader for Tinker Garden. And so I actually teach an online class for ages two to five. And you can look that up, go to tinkergarden.com and you can search for my name if you want to join one of my sessions. But it is STEM based learning and it's inquiry based on being outside or inside. Usually our classes are based on outdoor learning for parents and, and children. However, we've created a piece specifically for this time that is online camp basically. And we, we basically do experiments and projects each time. It's such a great tool. I recommend all parents um, look into Tinker Garden, even if you don't join a class, but they have so many free resources. That's a great one. Homeschool co-ops. Classical conversations is a really great one that I know of um, that I would put my stamp of approval on, but look into co-ops in your neighborhood so that if those children are doing online, if your child is homeschooled and those and there are other children that are being homeschooled that are doing like some virtual Zoom calls and meetings, you want to engage your children with those as well so that they can be a part of the conversations happening with their peers, okay? Zoom virtual lunch hours. Um, a lot of the classes that Juliana took over the summer, the children stayed together for lunch and they got to chat and laugh and just enjoy each other's company. This is a great thing to recommend for classrooms if it's already, I mean, for school systems, if it's already not happening for your child's class, to let them stay on as long as parent monitoring is happening, of course, and allow them to engage so that when they get back to school, they're so excited to be with with each other because they've already built the bond there. Another one, class drive-in events. So um, this one is where the, the children can maybe drive to the school parking lot and there's a, a drive-in movie set up. And while they all may be in their own cars, sitting in their trunks or sitting outside their cars to do social distancing, they can talk across the way from each other and so forth and enjoy each other's company. And the last one is crush COVID workout sessions. This is one that I plan to work on with my child's school where they will all come together in the school school parking lot and one of the things they'll be able to do is do a workout session while social distancing everybody in their own space but her class in particular not necessarily the whole school but her class or maybe her her and her siblings can come together and they can do a workout and this is a way of allowing them to engage and feel excited about being with their peers okay so that that party time that socialization do not take it for granted it truly matters okay so I have gone through pretty quickly because it's only an hour and we lost a little bit of time in the beginning. Uh, the five tips, good vibes only, setting up an engaging and motivating environment for your child to learn, staying on task, helping them keep a schedule and a flow, securing the village, knowing who, who are the vested members of your child's village are and making sure that the communication is always open and, and constant with that village, knowing where you stand with them in terms of where are they academically and where do they need to go and what areas do you need to supplement and party time, making sure that they are having having some engagement with their peers on some level. I hope that this was beneficial to you and I'm happy to answer questions in this next season. One of the things I've placed on the bottom is ways that you communicate. I am happy to be a part of your child's village. You can go on freewrite.com and ask me a question and I will respond to you and give you uh, advice. I can also send you to Learn With Free on my Facebook page. If you are interested in Tinker Garden, that is a great way to see what Tinker Garden is. You can see actual sessions that I have personally hosted and also sign up for one. 
um, Instagram, Learn With Free. You can follow me there. I'm on LinkedIn and I'm also on Twitter. All of these are things that I have decided to do because I really want to be a benefit to the community, okay? So those are the ways that you can follow me and I'm going to turn it back over to Madeline so that I can answer some questions. I hope this was great for you. Oh, this was absolutely incredible, Free, and I can't tell if you can see all the comments coming through, but this was so resourceful, so informative. Um, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And I look forward to next week's and, or not next week, the following weeks, and then the following week after that. So for session two and three, um, they're going to be really fantastic. So please do stay tuned, everyone. Um, but we do have a question here. Um, while I'm asking this question, feel free to pop more into the Q&A box, everyone. Um, so this one is from Alan. She was wondering, um, so first off, she said, Free, this has been super informative and I feel much better about getting ready for the remote school year. Thank you. One concern I have is for my daughter who has an IEP. She did not receive um, nearly enough of the usual support for her in the spring. And although the school has had a few months over the summer to better prepare, I worry that she'll not receive enough support from the school to help keep her focused. My husband and I work full time from home, so we cannot hold her hand all day. Do you have any advice for the situation? Yes, so usually, so first I wanna take you back to the school. A lot of times people feel like the school won't help, but the truth is you go back and you say, I'm working full time and my husband works full time. And normally her IEP says that she gets these things. How do you plan to make sure that the accommodations and modifications that are in her IEP will be handled and allow them to answer? Because if they are not answering that, that's actually against the law. They have to, at a certain point, connect to what they've agreed to do. That is the school. Now they may say because of COVID, some things aren't available. Then you ask them, well, what are the ways that you plan to, uh, uh, to deal with that problem? So start with the school because those are things that are demanded upon them, especially in a public school system. And if your child has an IEP, that is a law mandated document. And you wanna make sure that they are doing their part. If you have an advocate, you can even talk to your advocate and have them go forth and find out what are the things that the school should be doing even in the middle of a crisis, okay? Now, beyond that, again, this is where that note, that diagnostic thing happens. So if she's been tested, that means that they have at some point have documentation of her levels and where she is and the support she needs. So get cop if you don't have copies of it, get a copy of that from the school. Because when you have that copy, you can then say, okay, so she struggled with letters and sounds. And then here are some resources for um, that are recommended for that. And so you can go and like I said, teachers pay teachers and look up supplement support and it'll break down for you different resources based on those areas whether it's phonemic awareness or phonics or comprehension whatever the areas of concern are you can then go and pull those resources and if you have those once you have those um, those areas of concern you can also email me and then I can guide you into specifically with your particular situation how I can give you some resources that may help with that okay but start with the school that's so important Oh, thank you so much, Free. And I can't thank you enough for saying, like, like you said before, I, you're part of the village. So for people who need that support or need some advice, please check out Free's website. I'm so excited that this timed up perfectly with the launch. So I put in the chat box, Free's website, as well as Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the different platforms. So please, please, after this, be sure to, um, to make sure you're following Free. Um, uh, here's another question just came up. Yes, and if you subscribe, mm -hmm. if you go to freewrite.com today and you just sign up, it will automatically send you the information from today's website. I mean, from today's presentation. Okay, so Perfect. as soon as you go, you'll it'll automatically go directly to your email. Okay, incredible. And with that said, also if um, if you have been here with us today and you realize your friend or family member could benefit from hearing about this webinar, hearing all the resources that Free shared today. This will be recorded, this is recorded, and this will be broadcast on our website. So you can go and check it out um, if you weren't, if, if the person wasn't able to attend today. Um, this next question is from Angela. So when serving middle schools, what should we be looking for? We are just starting our fifth grade year remote. Okay. Say the question again, when, yeah. you, in, when with middle, middle school, grade, what should, 
um, like what should they be looking for? I guess this could actually even go to all schools. Like what are some, what are some factors that you should look for when looking at schools? Okay. Okay. And let me ask this. And I, hopefully the person can respond quickly with, is this a virtual learning experience or is the child actually going to school? Because mm. those look different. Well, I'll answer, I guess, to both. For a virtual learning experience, you wanna find a school that has a program that's already intact. So for instance, in Virginia, uh, uh, Prince William County and this, uh, the areas around here, there, a lot of them are using something called Canvas. And the cool thing about Canvas is it's a great learning um, platform that allows the children to progress based on where they are. So you want to find out, and that's for any parent, what is the, the platform? And if there are trainings for that platform, for instance, I know our counties out here are having tutorials for parents. That is so important for you if you have a virtual learner to know what platform are they using. That's also another way to see is this something that's going to be something that your child even loves because some children do not like screen time. They haven't had a lot of it. It wasn't something that was promoted in the household. And so it may be difficult for them to sit and stay on the computer when they would rather be communicating differently. So you can ask them, okay, if how do we reduce the amount of Canvas time? And then what are supplemental maybe um, paper uh, email document or assignments that can be sent home to your child because maybe that isn't gonna work for them, okay? So how can the school accommodate the fact that your child doesn't you know, necessarily learn in that way? Um, as far as going to um, middle school, um, so fifth grade here is, is actually usually still in elementary, but if you're going to middle school, you're probably going to be changing classes. It's so important to engage with all of their teachers. Who are those teachers? What are their expectations? Um, you also want to make sure, like how, like I would also recommend this to every parent, make sure, how do you know how they're stopping cyberbullying or any type of bullying, you know, if your child's going to school, but how is cyberbullying being stopped? You know, how are they making sure that the children are socializing? Is it structured? Is like if they're doing virtual lunch hours, is there an adult um, from the staff present at that time? Are they making sure that parent, other parents aren't engaging with other children because that can be an uncomfortable situation too? Those are the things that you want to consider. As far as the curriculum, like I said, find out what the curriculum is. And you might not know all the answers to how to do the ins and outs, but at least if you know, is it does it have a... a um, uh, a singing component? Does it have a, you know, a music component? Does it have an arts-based component? Is it STEM and inquiry-based? Those are things you want to know because if you know that your child is interested in those things and it does not include that, then those are, again, areas where you want to supplement. I hope that I answered that question. If I didn't, if you write it a different uh, in freewrite.com specific to what you want to know, I'll answer it that way for you. Okay. No, that was so helpful. That was really, really helpful, especially because thinking about this new train of, you know, the digital space, like cyberbullying, like that's such a great like thing to add. And especially how are they going to be creating or translating the arts into this new space? Um, so that was very, very helpful. Um, thank you so much again, Free. And again, everyone who's joining here today, stay tuned, put in your calendar, September 10th and September 24th will be session two and session three. Um, but hopefully this was helpful for you. Share it, spread it. Um, make sure you can put, you can post about it. It'll be up on our website and make sure to check out Free's website. Thank you yes, so much Free, for your so time today. Thank you. This yes, thank you. Please send your questions. If I didn't get to them, send your questions to me. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Take care. See you on the 10th. <laughs> on the 10th. Yes. Take yes. care, everybody. Take care. Bye.